How do you think our parents would react if I were to tell them that I'm a... A what? You know, a... a fag. Hey, shh. What is so wrong with living at home until you get married? This is gonna kill them. Tell them. Why is Nino a better roommate than us, eh? Yeah, why? Because Nino's my lover. Ah! Emil Goodrow, welcome to Queer Radio here on 4 Z. My pleasure. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning in Montreal. Yeah. As well. Which is, it's a rude time to be getting people up for a, an interview, isn't it? Oh, that, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, I don't mind it. Uh-huh. I'm finding you particularly because you're the director and co-writer of the film Mambo Italiano, which opened Thursday the 23rd of October, which is today around Australia. It's been open already in Canada and the United States now for a few weeks. How yeah. is the film going? It's going well. No, so far we we did uh, more than six million in the box office, and uh, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Uh, in Canada, it opened uh, in uh, cine- multiplexes, you know, so it's, it was a mix of straight and gay audience. In the States, now it's playing in uh, I think more than 35 cities in uh, in more independent type of cinemas. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's fun. We're, we're going. We're, we're waiting to see what it's going to do in Australia. Where, like in Canada, it's getting a wide release, so I'm very excited about that. I was impressed to see that it's opening in cinemas across Brisbane as well, so all the suburban cinemas will be showing yeah. this. Because it's the sort of film that a wide range of people will enjoy. They should see it. I think so, I think so. We always, we always uh, when I was doing the movie, uh, Steve, the, the writer, and me, Steve Galuccio, the writer, and I, we always wanted to do a mainstream comedy. So it was always the objective to, for that movie to be shown to uh, a wide audience, you know, mm-hmm. to have a, a movie with a gay pro- protagonist surrounded by a lot of people, a lot of, gay, a lot of straight characters who are funny, and uh, to make that movie accessible. And to make it fun to watch for a gay audience and straight audience. And, and that was fun because that's what, that's what happened here. We want to see, I, see, I want to see the movie, and there were a mix of people in it, and I think it's good. I think it's great for a gay person to go see a movie with a, a gay protagonist and to watch it surrounded by a lot of straight people, and they seem to really get into it. They seem to be, really enjoy it, and they respond to, they respond to it. So I think it's a good experience. It's fun. Because mm. exactly that happened with the previous session that I saw, which the radio stations had given away lots of free tickets. Mm-hmm. So... The cinema was actually full of people who had no idea perhaps what the film was about. Oh, yeah. And one woman I spoke to afterwards, a young woman, she said that she was really impressed. She had no idea what to expect, but she had a great time. Great. Uh-huh. I like to hear those things. So, And it is important when you're putting together a gay-themed film, there's often concern about how people are going to judge it, whether they'll think that there are stereotypes here. And this film, though, doesn't just look at gayness, it looks at Italianness doesn't it? That's yeah. a special issue. Yeah, it was kind of, it's, it's, it's a really delicate matter. That's what we realized when we were doing it and when it's releasing. That's the gay, the gay, the gay matter, the, the gay subject and the Italian subject. It's kind of two very delicate matters to handle. So, but while doing it, it was very important for us that the, the, the gay community in Montreal and in Canada and everywhere, that we never wanted to insult them. That it was they really Steve Gallucci who wrote the play on which the, the movie is based. He's an Italian living in Montreal in uh, first generation, still living with his, uh, his, his his aunt and father in Little Italy in Montreal. So the, those people are the one that you know he, he loves. So for us and for for him and for me, it was very important that we were uh, doing that that seeing themselves on the screen would be something that they would be proud of. Mm-hmm. And so far, the, 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 the response from them is very good. So uh, it, it was delicate. And the, for the gay, the gay audience, too, you know, we've seen ourselves so, uh, so few times on, on big screens that we're still very uh, sensitive about the way we're portrayed. And is it gay enough? Is it not too gay enough? Is it caricature? Is it uh, true? So it, it's kind of you have to, 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 to trust your intuition, your instincts to know uh, how to do it well. Yes. Certainly, it's it's valuable that this film is one very much like the Australian film The Sum of Us, the David Stevens written film yeah. that starred Jack Thompson and Russell Crowe. It showed suburban gay men, and it wasn't as if they were trying to make out that suburban gay men are macho, but that these are men who are attracted to men, but they want to live with their family and their friends where they are. They don't choose to go to live in a gay village. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Which is referred to, of course, in Montreal. Yeah. Yeah, that's a reality. I, w- I was a, a volunteer at Helpline in Montreal, mm-hmm. Gay Helpline, uh, Gay Line, and uh, the, I, I had so many calls from uh, not necessarily as, yeah suburbs people, of course, or people live in the suburbs, but that I had a lot of phone calls from uh, son and daughters of immigrants living in Montreal uh, and Quebec, and for them it was extremely difficult to make their coming out, uh, and some of us, for some of them it was just impossible. And I thought it was very interesting. So it's a reality that we we really seen. So I uh, I was thinking when I was reading the play, we need, I think that that this story needs to be to be uh, to be seen. And it was it's, I think it's that that makes the movie uh, contemporary in a way uh, that uh, other coming out story. You know, we've seen other coming out story, but we've never seen that coming out story and all those all those people where they're coming from, how it affects the way they think, the way they see the world. So for Steve and I, we we said you know uh, I think we need we need to show that story mm-hmm. because like the some of us, the characters that are presented are based as you say on people that you know experiences that you've had, and it is important to include these real life issues because like some people might look at it and say parts of it are contrived, but life itself happens like this as well. Yeah, we, we we're gay, but we're not only gay. You know, we have all dreams. Uh, we want to be uh, uh, loved by our parents. We want to to, which to have nice jobs. So that's that's something that I think adds dimension to uh, to gay characters. Mm-hmm. It helped with the some of us to get audiences in and get them confident that they had a big name established star, Jack Thompson. This is a long time before Russell Crowe became a star, mm-hmm. and this has happened also with Mumbo Italiano. You've chosen some of the best, most famous actors in Canada as well as Paul Savino from the yeah. United States. Yeah. And was that deliberate just to, to give people reassurance that they're seeing something that's of quality that they'll be able to enjoy? Uh, in a way, maybe yes, but when we do casting, it's, it's, such, it's such a difficult process. For me, it's a, by far the most stressing uh, period of doing a movie. It's trying to find the right actors for the, all those parts because when you do a comedy like that, you don't have anything else to, to rely on. It's not, you don't have special effects. You don't have nothing. You just have the screenplay and the actors. So if, if I don't find the right actor for the part, sometimes it's kind of, you want to kill yourself you know, it's, uh, because that part, you just might uh, cut it from the movie because you know it won't work. So doing the casting for a movie like that, it's really, really a, a big challenge just to find the right actors for those parts. Uh, to have somebody like Paul Sorvino, of course, it's good because it brings uh, credibility to the movie. And because he's, he's, he's Italian, that's very good for us because we wanted at first to have a, a total Italian cast, but we realized it was difficult. So to have that uh, father in the movie who is that amazing character, actor from the U.S., it was good for us. It was, I think you're right. It was giving us, in a way, a seal of approval in, from uh, uh, the, the the actor, you know, actors community, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's hard to imagine anyone being the mother, being Maria, other than Jeanette Reno. Hey, she she's wonderful. <laughs> and here in Quebec, she's uh, she's an icon. She, she's kind of Lisa Minnelli in a way. She she's that amazing singer with that powerful voice. We know her. We all know her since we're kids. And what's great about Jeanette is that you, most act, most actresses of that age, you know, they they don't look like that. They all they all go they all get uh, facelifts, and they, and you have Jeanette who have that who she lived that very difficult life, mm-hmm. and it shows in her face. And I think if if you see most Italian mothers or any immigrant mothers, you know, they have that that we see in their face that they they have that tough life. And it's it's very important for the character to have it give it an authenticity. Yeah. So I thought she bring that, and she's such a charismatic and honest actress that you know it makes it much more easy for for me to work with her. And that way, she's just be she's become the character. Yep, certainly. But you also brought most of the the cast, the cast and crew, rather the people who've done the cinematography, the sound, etc., are people who've worked with you in the past. Yeah, and my my second movie. Yeah, the quality of every aspect of the film is wonderful, especially the editing, I believe. We worked, you know, a movie like that, uh, 
anything. It's it's like any movie, but especially a comedy like that, where where timing and rhythm is the key of everything. You know, all the scene. It's just it's so it has to be so precise that in the editing room, I spent three months in the editing room with Richard Como, and we worked very hard to make it work. It's not obvious at the beginning when we saw the assembling. It's the first editing of the movie. Nothing was funny. Nothing was tight. And it was really after choosing every line, you know, every the, the, listening to every take to choose the right line, the way the, the, the actors said it, to be able to, to build every scene, to give it the right rhythm, to cut silences, to to put sometimes the sound of a, a take and to put it on the image another one. You know, it's very, very, very precise. And in comedy, as I said, you, you have a, a half a second delay and it's not funny. Yeah. So it's really precise, and I really wanted that movie to be fast-paced, mm -hmm. and uh, so the editing it gives it a lot. In the writing, of course, the writing is the first thing. If you have a tight written script, it helps a lot to have to, to, have, to have a tight edit a screenplay, because I think it's the first place where you edit it in the screenplay. If you have short scenes, uh, it helps a lot at the end, of course. Leaving was easy. Bringing them to visit my new apartment was the hard part. This building got to be 100 year old. Well, that's part of its charm. What's so charming about it being old? We're old. We're not charming. You know, something tells me I didn't make a very good first impression. Forget <laughs> about it. Just, just try to relax. Now, do you prefer headsets or a regular phone? Well, I'm quite good with these. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Because it's normal to feel nervous the first time. Oh, nervous? No, no, this isn't nervous. This is, uh, petrified. You'll do fine. Just remember that the callers need to feel that what they're saying is not falling on deaf ears, okay? Okay. We're not here to give advice. We're not here to judge. No judging. Then what's the point? <laughs> um. <laughs> so, uh... So, do you do this often? Yeah, every Saturday afternoon, like clockwork. And you enjoy listening to other people's problems? Well, it, um, it gets me out of my head, and it's a great way to relax. Actually, I uh, started doing it because, like you, I don't like bars, and I wanted to meet interesting people. Have you met any? Um, not until today. You ready? No. Yes, you are. Go. Hello, Gay Helpline. How may I help you? They're gonna kill me if I tell them I'm a fag, but I can't go on this way. You don't have to tell them. But this is killing me. Then tell them. But then they're gonna kill me. Well, then you got nothing to lose, because either way you'll end up dead, right? Hello? On the practical side of what the film says to people, in terms of issues, each person, each gay person, gay or lesbian in the world, really has to work out for themselves when and how it's appropriate to break the news to their parents. Mm -hmm. But in Mumbo Italiano, when the parents react with shock, that is a real reaction. That happens with plenty of parents. We know that that's true. Our friend Shelley from Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays in Brisbane told us, yeah, sometimes you need to give parents a period of time to adjust. Yeah. But it is good to have telephone counselling lines that can help people in the meantime to get support. And I think that it's valuable that the film will let a lot of viewers realise that these services exist because that's they are life-saving. <laughs> hmm. As it wasn't in our mind when we, we did that, because for us it was first a way to, for the actor, to the other character to talk about himself and to know him better. We thought it was a fun way and a fast way and, uh, in a way easy, easy way to, to have the actor, the, the, the character talk about himself. But I guess, uh, I guess you're right. And because I was a volunteer in a gay line like that uh, for a couple of years, uh, I, I know the importance of those lines and I know, uh, it can be, uh, in a way, sometimes it can really save lives, yep. literally. Uh, some of the calls we have in those lines are so dramatic. It's kind of... Uh, because uh, sometimes we have the impression that we live in a really easy gay world because of the other people we the surround us and, uh, you know, we live in, in, in big cities with, with gay village. But the reality, it's still, it's still not that easy for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think a line like that, it's really good. Just for the fact that those people, they talk to a gay person, knowing that person is gay. For some people, it's the first gay person that they talk to. So only that 
and, and the person that is caring and that's listening to them with uh, compassion, only that, it's such a big thing for those, those, those people. Yeah. Of course, the audience should be aware that counsellors are trained properly before they start answering phones. Absolutely. <laughs> You have to pay many weeks of, of training with psychologists to be sure that you're, you're good. Yeah. But when it's a comedy like that, you have to, to do a little trick. Yeah. The spooky part of it, though, with this film was the group of people, the sort of people that you have sitting around in that session where they're saying, this is why I want to do gay line, is exactly the same mix of people that attended a similar session that I attended just two months ago here in Brisbane. Oh, yeah. Exactly the same mix of people. It was... Oh. Yeah, but I, well, I, as I tell you, I did that training, and I did, the, and it's it's fun, and I thought it was interesting because that's not something we've seen that much in movies, in game in, in movie with a gay team. We've seen a lot of you know the 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 discotheque, the bars, the the village, all those places where they go, but we rarely seen that there's all a community. Uh, all you say, so, oh, yeah, I don't know what you would say it in English. Uh, kind of volunteers. There's another side, another kind of aspect of gay life that we're rarely seeing, which that that community uh, work, community volunteer type of thing. And I thought it would be interesting to see because Angelo, like a lot of, uh, of, of gay men or gay women, is not very comfortable with the gay village at first. It's something it's very scared of it. So to, to enter the gay world that way, it's something that a lot of people do, but we, we've, we've rarely seen it in a, in a story or in movies. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's set and filmed on location in Little Italy in Montreal. Yeah. So... Are local Italians in Montreal happy with it? Yes, yes. Uh, for them, it's fun to see themselves on screen because they rarely see that. You know, they, they've seen Italian, uh, American Italian. They've seen a lot of mafia type of movie. But uh, it's fun for them to see. Uh, it's, I think it's very important. That's why I think it's very important for gay people too, to see ourselves at, as protagonists in movies, you know. And I think for the Italian community in Montreal, it was fun to see themselves. Of course, some, some of uh, when you do a comedy like that, uh, there's a little percentage of the people who are kind of they don't want. We're not like that. Like any comedy you will do about any group, you have people who don't see themselves like that. And in, uh, and some of the people will say to us, you know, you could have go farther because you, know, you tone it down. So, uh, but so the reaction was good because they, they really get it. They get little jokes that are in the movie that nobody else gets in a way, you know, mm. just just to see themselves and it it makes them laugh to recognize themselves. So uh, that that was good for us. Yep. I noticed that in our sessions too that there would be people perhaps right up the back who laughed at some key points, and they're obviously the Italian jokes that they were getting. Exactly. When when he when he has to move out to uh, you know when he moves out with, before getting married and it's that big melodrama they really really got that. You know? Now I reckon Mumbo Italiano it's like undeniably I reckon it's great entertainment, but it must be warming for you to realise too that people are having their hearts and minds also stimulated, not just being made to laugh. Would it have been enough for you that the film was just successful and entertaining? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I think for me, when I do a movie like that, the first thing I want to do is really grab the audience and, and put them inside the story. And I think, but you know, yes and no, yes and no, because uh, I think when you do that, and they're really with the characters and they're touched and they, they laugh, but they, 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 a lot of people, they, they, they tell me that, you know, they cried and it was, it was an emotional experience too. So I think that's the best way. And after that, they think about it and they, they really get something out of it because they add an emotion. It's not something it's something they think of because everybody in a way intellectually knows that we have to be compassionate and we have to be tolerant. But to get inside of a, a story and to experience to experience it in an emotional way, I think it's much more powerful than just uh, uh, understanding it. So for me, that's why telling a good story and that it's, it's kind of a, a, a it's, it's a journey for an audience to enter a story and to just forget about everything else and to go in there with their emotion and not with their mind I think it's more powerful and I think after the movie realizing how touched they were by it and you know that they had fun and it was good and they start thinking about it I think it's more powerful mm -hmm. do you know if this movie is being promoted overseas as having any similarity to big fat Greek wedding in Australia the advertising for it is suggesting that here's a movie that's quite like Big Fat okay. Greek Wedding. And I haven't seen that film, so I really don't know. But it would seem to me that this is a film that stands on its own. It doesn't need to be likened to anything else. I think so too, because 
because of that theme, you know, it's it's uh, it's immigrants and it's Greek and it's Italian. There's some similarity there. But uh, when people see Mambuta, you know, usually they don't make the comparison anymore. Uh, because right. it's, as you said, I think it's different. The rhythm is different, and uh, you know the, the the theme is of course very different because of the the gay issue in the movie. I think it's a little more dramatic. Uh, it's more quick, more fast paced. Yeah. So, uh, but there's, it's kind of, for me they're kind of uh, uh, related cousins in a way. So I don't know. I don't know how they market the movie, but I, I know that they, I think they must know what they're doing. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the thing. On on our show, I've been trying not to give away too many of the jokes at all. I don't want to ruin any part of the plot or any joke that someone can get by going to see the whole lot. Oh, that's good. I appreciate that. It's important. The main thing for me, I think, is that people should just trust that this is going to be an entertaining film. It's gay positive all the way through, and you know right from the very start that this film has been made with gay men involved. Hey, the, there's been no compromise made here to try to titillate or to apologize. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very empowering. And it's been a long time since I've seen a film that's so entertaining and so honestly gay. Oh, thank you. Yep. So congratulations on putting a wonderful film together, and I hope you do get great success, especially when this goes to video, to DVD. It should be very successful, hey? I hope so. <laughs> and I hope it was successful in Australia this weekend, you know. Oh, yes, of great. course. The other thing I was going to say is that I think Luke Kirby does a great job in the stills for the film, for Mambo mm -hmm. Italiano. He looks slightly geeky and a little bit awkward. Yeah. But he can't help looking beautiful at times on screen. Mm -hmm. And he is just an amazing actor. He is. He is. You know, we looked, we saw, I saw every actor that age in Canada. Uh, when I was casting that movie, and by far it was the best. And what's, when, when you cast a movie like that, it was it's like casting a romantic comedy. You need a lead actor who will be appealing, sexy, but at the same time that you will care for what's happening to him. And uh, Luke has that quality. He's good looking, he's charming, but at the same time you just put him in the screen and you care for him. You want him to be happy. He's, he has that quality. And he's an amazing actor. He's, he's very young. He's 24. He's, I think he's been out of school, for, uh, of, uh, out of uh, acting school for two years, and he knows what to do. He has great instincts, and he, he, he's really an amazing actor. I think he will have a great career. And uh, for us, and for me to work with him was so easy and so fun. Mm -hmm. And he's intelligent and he's funny. And there's not a lot of actors who are <laughs> intelligent, you know. So it was it was fun, you know. And I really really like him. And I think he bring he's the soul of the movie in a way. Absolutely, yeah. He certainly sells it. So, are there other elements? Is there anything you would like to say to our audience about this film? Uh, I, mean? I, I I don't know. I think uh, you know we worked very hard to do that to make that movie a movie that uh, that will be, as you said, honest and at the same time entertaining. So it was uh, for us. It was. Uh, we had that fine line of, of, uh, of walking, and I really hope the gay audience will appreciate to see that movie. They know that to see a movie like that, is, which is a mainstream movie with a gay protagonist, and to see themselves on the big screen uh, with a straight audience around them, and to to respond at the same time because we've seen so many straight movies, you know, with straight audience with sometimes gay characters in it, but most of the time uh, the gay characters are. Uh, uh, support support character, you know, yeah. and or we see ourselves on very very uh, very good but independent movie in specialized theaters or on cable, or we see ourselves, you know, as uh, characters who make people laugh. But in Amboya, you know what we what we did. I think it's fun. It's that we have those the 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 the, the, the protagonist uh, Angelo is not that funny. Is 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 he has dreams. He wants you know, he wants to be happy. And the people, the straight people around him are funny. You know, <laughs> and usually it's kind of the straight people are more serious. And you have the gay character who is very funny, in a way uh, because he can be a caricature. So uh, we really worked hard to try to find the right balance. And you know, it's I hope I hope the gay audience in, in Australia will appreciate it. And it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for getting up early and giving oh, us the time, thank you. Emil. Take the time to call me. You have a good time and have a great run with the film. Good. Thank you. So, uh, good night. Bye, Emil. Bye-bye. <laughs> Gino, Maria, what are you two doing here, huh? We live here. Come stay, Lina. Bene. Let me just take a minute to tell you how sorry I am about what happened at your house that night. Nothing to be sorry about. Oh, the way Angelo spoke to you, it was disgusting. He was upset. Mm. Yeah. 
He was upset. Well, now he's alone like a dog. And that's what he deserves. Who says he's alone like a dog? Yeah, who says? Why? Are you talking to him? I just assume. Always a mistake to assume. Bigger mistake to assume. Oh, he's moved back in with you. Why would he want to do that? He's an adult. Adults should live on their own. Well, whatever you say. I just hope he finds himself a nice Italian girl. He won't find himself a nice Italian girl. He's gay. Nobody is gayer than my son. Yes. And he's got a new boyfriend. A gorgeous man. Loves Angelo to death. I should love my wife the way he loves Angelo. Ha, ha, ha.